So the presentation is divided in four parts. The, four, the first part is just general aspects and, and some concepts. The second part is about patterns of conflict transformation in Latin America. Um, um, I include Central America because it, it plays an important role. And the third and fourth part is about our specific case that case study. So our research question was how peace has been contested at the local level in Colombia. We understand peace in a negative and in a positive conception. Um, we understand as well local peace building initiatives as a set of interrelated uh, state, government and state actors and intervention with the aim to build uh, peace through the grassroots level. <coughs> the patterns of conflict transformation in Latin American context. So, since the 19th century, there have been few interstate uh, conflicts in South America and in, in, in Latin America as well. So, the, the context has been characterized by internal armed conflicts and dictatorship. Um, today, the only internal armed conflict we have um, is in Colombia. Uh, civil society, they have played different roles during these phenomena. Uh, for example, during, during the end of dictatorship, they had to shape the transition and also to consolidate the democracy in internal armed conflicts. Uh, they have had um, uh, several roles, uh, formal roles, as in Guatemala during the peace process, and as well now in Colombia, as uh, just uh, my, uh, my colleague presented. What is the situation right now? So after the Cold, uh, after the Cold War, uh, South America has experienced the longest uh, and interrupted period of democracy. Uh, democracy in, in, in the uh, in, uh, election. I mean by, uh, by democracy, election. But at the same time, we have very high levels of structural violence and, and, and direct violence. Uh, Latin America remains one of the most unequal countries in the region. Uh, the levels of violence are really high, especially in, Latin, in Central America. And one in every five people uh, are, are, are poor. So the question is how peaceful is South America? We didn't address this question in this paper, but we hope to do that uh, later. Um, so is, the question is how these problems that are happening now are related uh, with the peace settlements and peace transition that happened in the past. Normally these problems have been analyzed as a consequence of low levels of democracy. But I really think that in Central America they have some links, but it's really difficult uh, to find it, but uh, um, it's something that uh, we will be working with uh, Rodi in the future. The scholarship on peace building in Latin America remains underrepresented. Normally, this process of transition has been seen in a, uh, seen, uh, and, uh, have been seen in the trans, uh, from the transitology scholarship. Although we have experienced several peacekeeping and peace settlement, and we have been one of the major recipients of um, uh, aid. Also, the scholarship look at this problem from a state-centric approach and a uh, top-down. We chose Colombia. I'm very happy because now Colombia becomes super popular, so you <laughs> find every conference mentions Colombia. There are like seminars, masters, wherever, uh, now in Colombia, so, I'm, I'm really so no, I don't have to explain the context. But I just want to mention this statement by Gonzalo Sanchez, the director of the Center of Historical Memory, and I think he, um, he summarized very well uh, what is happening in Colombia. So in Colombia, at the same time, we have had conflict, uh, peace negotiation, democracy, and, uh, uh, and war. Uh, someone asked me yesterday how much I was affected by the conflict, and I have to say, fortunately, I haven't. So I think that is why one of the reasons why the conflict has uh, uh, lasted so long, because the majority of the people can live in Colombia without knowing there is a conflict going on. So it's not like a big priority like in the main cities. Some of my friends, they, they know now because there is this conflict between Santos and Uribe, but before they uh, really didn't care about this problem. Um, so that is one of the reasons why we chose local building in Colombia, because uh, we have the only conflict and the longest conflict in, in the region. Second, uh, is one of the most prominent case of peace building initiatives in the region, not only in the local level, but in the national level. 50 million people have participated from the 70s to 2003. This includes people who have participated like twice, uh, two or three times, that's why 50 million, but it's still a very large number. 
They have national and local coverage, and um, also different aims, cultural peace, political action, protest, survival, resistance, and a no-violence style. Um, this, uh, this graph shows the dynamics of the peace initiative. Uh, is measured by the number of actions of every year. But it's important to mention here because it's a lot of information is that during the peace process, the first one of the first attempts of peace process with the FARC, the number of peace initiatives declined in, from 1997 to 2002. It's a very like a uh, uh, significant decrease. From that point to today, they have been like up and down and in, uh, peace building initiatives. So I'm going to talk about Montes de Maria. Um, El Salado, the, 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 uh, the village they mentioned this morning, uh, is part of this uh, region. So Montes de Maria uh, is very important for two reasons. They have one of the most important uh, social movements in terms of reclamation of land in the 70s. Um, and also uh, because as well it had been very badly affected by the conflict. So what happened between 2000 and 2000, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 2000 and 2005, uh, uh, half of the population have been displaced, uh, a lot of massacres. The FARC is defeated in 2002 by the, um, by the paramilitares. Some people say, um, so Montes de Maria uh, became a pacif uh, very pacific place because of the government. And I say, no, it was because the paramilitares, and that is, has been proved that the paramilitares came to the area and they, by a military means, uh, um, kill everyone and then they, <laughs> not everyone, sorry, but they kill, uh, they did a lot of things, so that's why the region became a, 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 a city. So in 2005, after the FARC and the Paramilitaris left, we have a flood of international cooperation and also the experts and uh, new Paramilitaris groups and also the, the army. The government and the European Union and the UNDP, uh, they decided to create like um, a big umbrella uh, to channel the funds and uh, the efforts to help building peace in, in, in the local level. That this is the local uh, development and peace uh, program of Montenegro. <coughs> I'm just going to mention some of the achievements and some of the uh, problems. So the first, I think, and this was mentioned by a lot of people, uh, the political impact. There were some issues that before were impossible to talk about it, like land institution, protection of rural areas. So from 2005, you can find those spaces. There is always every day a meeting uh, about this topic. So it's a topic that it can be raised now. Uh, the consolidation of different networks and agendas in human rights development. So now you have networks of women, networks of young people, networks of um, old people, like every kind of network. Uh, but one person leader was telling me, okay, no, it's fine, we have our agendas, uh, this is amazing, but the problem is that the structural problems are still in place. So even if we have the best idea, if that doesn't change, it's going to be very difficult. The conditions of life have improved for some people. There were some economic projects. There was a lot of money. I don't have the number because I found different numbers, so I, I don't know I don't know how much money was in the region. But the roots of the conflict have uh, hasn't been addressed. Haven't been addressed. When I asked someone, um, sorry, and the main problems, top-down approach. So the European Union, especially the European Union, they came with this very difficult. Uh, assessment um, and evaluations form to evaluate all the programs. Um, people were saying that they just, they came or we came because I was working with the UNDP with the programs already pre-designed. And so we wanted this project so people have to adapt. I will argue, yes, that is true, but it's not that the UNDP was thinking to build uh, bridge, bridges and people were thinking to build houses. Even in some points, the agendas match, but of course, at the end, what prevailed was uh, the people who have the money, like international cooperation. Uh, organization became dependent on internal and uh, external assistance. There were some issues of corruption, disconnection with the local le national level. I think that is the biggest problem. Um, 
Um, I'm quoting letter R to say there are some bottom-bottom uh, uh, strategies, bottom-bottom approaches, and I think that happened in Monte de Maria, because what was discussed in Monte de Maria, very important discussion for five hours, six hours, who have been in Colombia know how are the meetings in Colombia. And, but it stay there. In the national level, it has a very little impact. So when I ask someone about um, what has happened with the main causes of the conflict, what you have done about the main causes of the conflict, he told me basically that it wasn't their responsibility, that was the responsibility of the government because they didn't have the power, they didn't have the leverage to change anything. He was like, how we can find fight uh, against corruption, how we can fight against illegal actors, how we can stop mining companies if they, those are uh, policies of the national government. Then in 2014, Everyone left. Um, my colleague from the USA, she was telling me, like, still they are in the region, they have some project, but the UNDP in two months decided like, to they cancel contracts and everything, and, and everyone left because apparently now it's a region in, uh, in peace. It's in a post conflict situation, so they don't need any, any more help. Um, the paramilitaries stay, people stay, of course the people who bought the law for very cheap prices and the organization. And just finally, I want to mention um, two final questions. Um, can peace initiative transform or redress the causes of the conflict? Are we expecting too much from them? Because if we haven't seen those, change, those changes, so we are like, no, maybe they are not doing anything. And the second, uh, should peace initiative remain autonomous from international cooperation? Will this decrease or increase the leverage and impact? I really don't see the UN and Mariana really, is, the UN is not that bad. Um, they are incredible people working very hard and doing what really they can. But as well, there is a, an infrastructure of the UN that need to change, but they are valuable people that are trying to do everything. So, for example, in Monte de Maria, when we left, I was, oh no, these organizations are, gonna, no, are not going to survive because our resources, what are they going to do with us? Of course, one year later, they are super well, they are doing very well, they are working maybe without the international assistance they had before, but they are doing very well. But in some regions, as in Catatumbo, where I'm going to do my field work, the conflict is still going on there. So sometimes these organizations need some international protection, but because even if you are wearing the UN um, uh, jacket, that shows protection. Thank you very much. <laughs>